One of the ways to establish your expertise is to have the discussion with your client about what is really going to be involved here. And, and what that does is it, that very discussion demonstrates your expertise. Because what you bring to the party is a real understanding of your skills and your area of expertise that your client does not have. And what they bring to the party is their experience with what they need, with their organization, with the goals and objectives that they have for this particular project. So, And they may also not know what they want. And they, and they usually, in my usually. experience, do not know what they want. But they usually have a very carefully defined what they want. And it u usually is limited in some way. So one of the ways of really helping your client is by walking them through what the possibilities might be, because you will do a better job of meeting their goals and filling the need that they have by using your expertise to sort of analyze with them in concert in a spirit of mutuality to actually reach a description of what is going to be accomplished that's agreeable to both. So it uses your experiences, their experiences, and the whole context together. And, and then what, and the result of that is you've, you, you've in effect changed the context of the assignment, and by doing so, you've eliminated any competition because no one else would define it the way you did. So you, in concert with the client, will define a new assignment and new possibilities that result in you getting the job if, they're, if you reach mutuality with them. You'll get the opportunity, and the competition will basically be eliminated. Well, and the other aspect of that is it's through your questions that they're going, where you have an expertise to, we've, we've got a lot of background noise here. That took care of that. <laughs> All I had to do was ask. I think we had a little bit of jet hammering going out, on outside, and, and Lana oh, stopped it for a moment. Maybe but. it was, well, I ask and it stopped, see? <laughs> so we do need to ask, right? It wasn't very long. Yeah. But I think one of your, part of your expertise is in asking the questions to help define really the scope of the job because in any situation, you probably know as a creative, you probably know more than they do. You know what the missing, you know what the moving parts are, they don't. And also the more people you can talk to in that kind of an environment, the better feel you're gonna get for what's going on. That's, that's right. And, and what, what are other people doing? Because that may give you a tip to what really the, the, the compass of the job is. That gives you is. insights. Yeah. yeah. You draw your insights from that conversation. And because you may see that there's nobody that's doing graphics. You may find out there's nobody that's you know really very good at the program you use, like InDesign. They yeah. use something else. I mean, those are all things that, that are visible. Yeah. So use your senses because it works. And I think that's really, in every sort of negotiation we do, personal or private, is peeling away those layers to try to get to, um, to know the other person so you know the fit. Also, I think one, one of the things I just thought of is, is admit there are things you don't know and that you're not good at right. because, believe me, they'll find out. So trying to hide, or hide those kind of vulnerabilities is a setup for a knockdown. So if you're not good at a certain program, or if you're not good at spelling, I just have a, had a client who got, didn't get the job because she wasn't a good speller. We have spell check, but she should have told them. You know, if that had been an upfront, um, you know, I'm really good at word processing. I use spell check. I've used word for years. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I'm not an intuitive speller. That would have been off the table. Yeah, right. Exactly. Instead, it, it became the, the, the big split. Yeah. 